Today I'm going to be looking at swapping boards on hard drives. So basically every hard drive like this one here has a little board on the bottom. And this board does a few functions like having a motor controller to drive the main spindle motor in it, a controller chip that converts the SATA signals into what the drive can actually read and write on the disk, and normally a little bit of DRAM as a buffer on it. And unfortunately at times these drives die. Sometimes it's due to user error like breaking off the connectors or just drives getting burnt or physically damaged. And sometimes, you know, your drive's dead and it might be the board, it might be something else. And sometimes you happen to have another drive that's about the same model, about as close as you can get. I've pulled up four pairs of drives here today and they all have basically the same drive model on it. it says the same model number, same part number, same SKU, they all look the same, the boards look the same. The PCB layout's the same, so it's, these are basically as identical of drives as you can reasonably get. And I'm going to be looking at, if I swap the drives between them, what happens? Do they work at all? Do they have the same smart data, which is where the drive reports its health status, hour count, and other things? Does the data read correctly? For testing data, I've set these up with BTRFS, which is a file system that supports checksumming. And I put files on it so that way I can actually verify that if it does read data, it reads it correctly. One quick disclaimer. If you have data on a drive you care about, you should take this drive to a data recovery pro. It'll give you the best chances of getting data back. I'm just experimenting with drives that I have to see what they can and can't do with playing with hardware. And to start off my testing, I'm going to be looking at two laptop drives. These are two and a half inch drives, seven millimeters, designed for laptops. They're from Toshiba. And both of these I've just harvested from laptops that got SSD swapped from about the same era. These are about as identical of drives as I can get my hands on. And I'm just going to take one of these and plug it into my test bench here. And now I've plugged one of these drives into my test bench here and it's appearing on the system. And looking at the smart data on the screen right now, I can notice that the serial number of the drive is correct in the smart data. And for a few other things to identify it by, Power on hours is 10,994. So I'm kind of curious what that's tied to. Now it's time for the moment of truth. I'm going to take this drive and plug it back into the test bench after swapping it. Uh, that doesn't sound good. And no drive shows up and it's clicking really badly. I'm going to unplug it. And here I have the other combination of drive and board assembly. Time to plug it in and see if this one happens to give me a better result. That one's clicking as well. And just to double check it doesn't show up in the OS, the OS cannot see the drive at all. And now one more test I'm going to do is just see if I swap the boards back, did I kill them? I've screwed the drives together with their original boards and now it's time to see if it works when I plug it back into the system. I don't hear any clicking yet, so that's a good sign. And it appears. I've now started the scrub in BTRFS. It's scrubbed about 2 gigs now without any errors at an expected rate of about 90 to 100 megabytes per second. So nothing seems to have been damaged by it, but at least for this specific drive, swapping it did not work and had no usable data and it's just clicks. I'm gonna go try another drive now. Maybe this one will give me better luck. I have a pair of these WD Green Power drives. They're AV drives, which means they're designed for set-top boxes, often found under your TV from your cable company. Time to do the final test. We got the drive, we got the computer. I'm gonna plug it in and let's see what happens. It's not clicking, so that's definitely a good sign. I'm running LSBOK okay on my Linux system, which is gonna list all block devices. It's waiting, it's not doing anything yet. Seems to have kinda had an issue here. It's just taking some time to recognize it. Oh, it seems to come up as SDE. Well, it looks like it's worked. It appears as SDE on my computer and it shows a single partition. I'm going to try mounting it to make sure it doesn't do anything too weird. And I have just successfully mounted the drive. It shows the correct amount of space has been used. 
and it hasn't thrown any arrows. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use BTRFS's scrub, which uses checksums to verify the data is correct. So I now have both of the smart datas on the screen, the left ones from before, the right ones from after the swap. So the interesting thing is the serial number is the same. So that must mean the serial number is tied to the physical hardware, not the actual board. The LUN identifier, the L-U-W-W-N device ID is different. So that might be tied to the board and it might be also randomly picked. I'm not sure exactly where that value comes from. Taking a look at power on hours, they appear to be the same, along with pretty much all the other smart status. So that looks like it's just reading all the smart data directly from the disk and not anything on the board in this case. And now taking another look at my scrub and BTRFS, I've scrubbed about 10 gigs of data with no checksum errors. If this completes without errors, I'm gonna try running bad blocks on it, which reads and writes all data on the disk to make sure there's no bad sectors. Because one of the things I've heard of why you can't swap boards is because the boards tell it where the factory bad sectors are. So if you swap the boards, that map is in different spots. So I'm guessing bad blocks would fail after swapping a board. It's been about 24 hours now and I've ran a full run of bad blocks on this drive and I haven't ran into any problems at all. I'm gonna take it off of here now and try the other combination of drives and board and see if that one happens to work as well. And here's the moment of truth for the second combination of board and drive. Plugging it in right now and I'm gonna just run lsblk on this system just to see what shows up. And the drive shows up. Doesn't seem to have any issues, and if I want to just run bad blocks on this drive as well, I can, and it seems to be writing correctly to this drive. Since I didn't put test state on the second drive, I'm going to just assume it's correct because the other one was. So, time to pull out the third set of drives. We've had one pair of drives that was a complete failure, one pair of drives that was a complete success. Third pair of drives is going to be these Hitachi drives. These ones are from about 2012 era. They work pretty well. Um, relatively high performance drives. I got these used, they have quite a few hours on it, but these two drives about as identical as I can get. So time to do another board swap. Here's for the moment of truth. I got a drive with a freshly swapped board. I'm plugging it into the system. It's spinning up. Sounds fine. Still running up the speed. It's been roughly a minute since I plugged this drive in. It sounds like it's spinning normally, but it's not showing any data on the drive at all in the OS, so anything the OS shows that it would be working. I'm gonna just try the second drive to see if it's a weird one-off issue. But it looks like this one is the, just doesn't initialize to the OS. And I have the exact same result on the second drive. Now I'm just hoping I didn't kill these two two tear drives and they start working again when I swap the boards back. But now it looks like one set out of the three drives I had worked. And I have one last set of drives I'm gonna take a look at. These are Seagate video drives. These are also made for home DVR systems. These, unlike the WD ones, are a bit interesting, which is why I have a different Optiplex now, because these will only turn on and spin if plugged into a computer that's compatible. It works in pretty much every desktop I've tried it in. But it won't work with any like HBAs or RAID controllers or NAS boxes. Which is kind of interesting, but otherwise they're just fine drives. And I'm going to just try doing the drive swap. Now it's time for the moment of truth. I'm going to take one of these drives, I put random data on both of them this time, plug it into power, and then plug it into data, and see what happens to the model. And this drive isn't showing up at all in the OS, even though it is spinning and did a little bit of clicking in the beginning as it attempted or tried to attempt to initialize. I'm gonna now try using the other drive and just see if that combination happens to work in this case. And it looks like the other drive has the exact same problem where it doesn't work at all. So it looks like for this model of Seagate video hard drive, it's the ST2000VM003. You can't swap drives between them. So that's all the tests I'm gonna run for today. Now that I've finished testing all four pairs of these drives, I got a few results and that are probably reasonably representative of all hard drives. So we got one drive completely worked with the switch. Two of them didn't work. They spun up, they seemed to try reading the drive but just couldn't finish. 
and one of them clicked, um, which really probably isn't good for any long term and could potentially do damage to the drive. Looking at it for a data recovery perspective, this is far from one out of four is far from a guarantee or even an optimistic goal. If you have data you care about, again, send it to a data recovery pro. They're much better than one out of four normally for getting data from drives, especially if it's a bad connector where it's almost guaranteed to get the data back. If it's the only thing you have left to try, I guess you might as well. It didn't damage any of my drives. They all worked fine after swapping the boards back. But I wouldn't try it in a data recovery situation. It didn't work just for fun. So interesting experiment. Unfortunately, there seems to be something on this board likely tied to the little ROM or flash chips the boards have that tell it how to initialize the disks. Or this could also be due to the slightly different revisions. Hard drives and most products have a lot of revisions they don't really tell consumers about where they change small things in the board or the platter system that might be causing the issue that they just can't look up the data or read that data from slightly different revisions. Thanks for watching this video on hard drives and subscribe if you want to see more videos on hard drives, servers, and other computer equipment.